This is Talk to Seattle, and I'm your host, Jason Rigdon. On this episode, I have the Seattle Walk Report with us. How are you today? Great. How are you? I'm doing great. Could you tell me a little bit about the Seattle Walk Report? Sure. So the basic premise of it, I guess, it's a comic on Instagram. And the basic premise is that I just walk around Seattle, take notes while I do it, and then I make a comic about it, whatever I've seen or things that I've heard or just things that I found interesting that day. So it's kind of like a I see it kind of as a travel journal, except it's of Seattle and not some far off exotic place. But there's so many interesting things here in Seattle. And, you know, I suppose every place is like that. If you just take a look at it, you'll find all kinds of interesting things. That's totally right. And I mean, until I started to do this, I kind of, I think I took some stuff for granted or didn't take the time to slow down and see it. But through walking and through making this comic and connecting with people, I really realized that how true that is. I think people think that, oh, Seattle's dead and (laughs) whatever. But if you take the time and go out there and see what's out there, it's a lot different than I think the way that a lot of people portray it or the way it's seen by some people. And you really seem to have an eye for detail of like spotting things that I think maybe other people might have missed. Yeah. I mean, I've always kind of felt that that's one of my gifts or curses is that I tend to notice the little things and kind of dwell on them or wonder you know, how they got there or, or what the story is or that kind of thing. And I think walking too, it's so, uh, you do it a lot. It's so kind of repetitive and it's kind of meditative in a way. And so you're more tuned in, I think, to those little things and, or you start to notice patterns like, oh, I've been seeing all this broccoli lately. What's up with that? You know, (laughs) that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely opened my eyes to a place that I thought I knew pretty well already. Walking around the city, you also get a better feeling of kind of the geography and the layout of the city that you don't quite get in the car. So much different things are kind of warped in the car because you're moving so fast. Oh, totally. And I mean, just knowing, you know, before I started walking and before I started doing the comic, Seattle was kind of divided up into these weird sections in my mind. And I never thought I was living at in Capitol Hill when I started the comic. And I didn't think, oh, I could go from my apartment in Capitol Hill and get to uh, Woodenville or whatever. Like, I mean, I guess that's outside of Seattle. But there were these far flung places, even like uh, Lake City or, you know, down to South Park or something like that. It's like, there's no way it just doesn't connect up in my mind. But then I set out and I just did it. And it was like, whoa, I see how this connects to this connects with this. And before that, it was all kind of bus routes in my mind, you know, whichever way the bus goes, that's the way that you get to these places um, because I don't drive. But I, it totally opened my eyes to a whole new thing, <laughs> you know, seeing how these things connected. It was really cool. And you've gone on some pretty long walks that you've documented. How far have you gone? Oh, that's a good question. I think my longest walks, I recently did one where I walked from the central district to Bellevue to downtown Bellevue. That was my longest one that I've done in a while, just because I've been busy with other things. Um, I know I've gone on some long ones that I haven't done an official report on. One of them was a Woodenville to the U District walk that I did, and that's a pretty long one. That took all day. Um, yeah, I've I've been around. Uh, I can't think. Of, no other ones are coming to mind, but I know that I've done some some long walks. And how long have you been doing this Seattle Walk Report? I started in July 2017, and I actually made the first one shortly before that. So I had initially thought I would just kind of keep it to myself and do a journal type thing. And then after I made the first one, I was like, oh, I just felt like there was something about it. And I wanted to get it out there somehow for people to find. And I wasn't that familiar with Instagram at the time, but I just downloaded it and chucked it up there. So I think I made that on maybe... June 30th, 2017 or something, and then started it on July 1st, 2017. So it's been a little bit over a year and a half, I think. So this wasn't really planned out as kind of organic? Yeah, it was totally organic. I mean, it, the whole the whole journey to get to that point was very organic. I totally didn't anticipate when I started it that it would kind of become the thing that it's become now. And I didn't, I mean, I had no idea like how to use Instagram or what it all was or whatever. So I just, I I just felt like, oh, I want this to be out there for people to find. And I didn't have a plan for world domination or anything like that. Not like I've achieved that goal yet, but you know, (laughs) I definitely didn't 
expect it to become what it's become. Yeah. And how did you deal with that response? I mean, one aspect of it is I believe you're an anonymous. You're, we don't know who you are. That's right. You kind of have a secret identity out there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, it's really cool to me to be able to be among people who I know are fans of the comic or sometimes I'll walk past somebody on the street and I'll think, I think that person commented on something that I posted last night, you know, and they just have no idea. So it's kind of a fun Harriet the Spy type outside looking in sort of thing. And I think it definitely helps with the power of observation and being able to do all those things and just be among the people and, and see what's out there. Um, I mean, the response it's it's just been pretty amazing. It's really, it's, it's, the comic is so me in so many ways. It feels like I just kind of like rubbed my face on a piece of paper and, <laughs> and put it on the internet. It's just so, it has my DNA all over it. That sounds kind of gross, but you know what I mean. And uh, so to have people respond in the way that they have so positively, it really is special to me. And the comic means a lot to me. And people will message me and say, oh, you know, I took a long walk this weekend and it's because of you or, oh, someone let me know that they're taking a trip overseas and that they um, were journaling about it and they decided to add pictures in addition to their words because they were inspired by my comic. So that's really special to me. I mean, it's really cool to have that kind of impact on people's lives and also to have them have no idea who I am or, you know, that sort of thing. So it's really cool. And how do you make the art? Is it pen and paper? It's pen and paper. Yeah. Um, I do it pen and paper, usually on graph paper. That's my secret to how it's so neat. And, uh, and then I just scan it and sometimes I'll add in the large areas of black digitally. Sometimes I'll do it with ink, but for the most part, it's totally hand done. Well, Instagram's turned out to be like a really great place for artists to really feature their work in a way they might not otherwise. Yeah, it sure seems that way. I wasn't that familiar with the kind of world that takes place on there before I started it, but it's definitely let me see what's out there that other people are doing. It's an easy way to share, to get immediate feedback. If you're working on something to just kind of an easy way to put your stuff out there without people really having to seek it out specifically, they can see their friends and they can see your stuff or other people's stuff or whatever. So, I mean, you know, I don't think it's without its downfalls or whatever, but, it's a good it's a good way for artists i think to to keep people keep what am i trying to say keep uh you're you're present in people's minds when you're on there because they don't have to seek you out specifically yeah it's hard to break in like what you're doing you'd traditionally be in like a newspaper maybe but it'd be very hard to just to break into that just out of the blue right i and i was kind of thinking about that the other day just how i don't know if it weren't for Instagram, sadly or not sadly, I don't know <laughs> that I would have been able to build up the kind of audience that I've been able to build up or that people would have found it as easily as they had. Because this is the whole world of if you have your own art blog or something, that's just not really the way that people get their get their information or their people that they like. People just don't really follow blogs, traditional blogs anymore in the same way. So to be on Instagram, it's a really helpful tool to connect with people. So do you have any favorite walks around town? Oh, you know, I've kind of changed my philosophy a little bit. I mean, there are definitely walks that I really enjoy, like walking around Lake Union is really pretty. You get a lot of different sorts of sites that I really like. Um, anything around Capitol Hill, I really like just because it's it's such a mix of you know, the old houses are pretty rich, nice, I don't know, <laughs> lawns or whatever by Volunteer Park. And then you can kind of get more weird trash in the Pike Pine area and that sort of thing. So it's always fun to see what's out there. But I've really come to believe, and this might sound a little bit corny, but that the magic of walking happens when you go outside your front door, wherever you live, whatever neighborhood you're in, and you just start walking and you see where you decide to go that day. I really think that that's the secret for a good walk, because I think if you try to follow somebody else's route to, to what's the word, uh, <laughs> to exactly, you might feel like, oh, I'm supposed to see this and I'm supposed to be, see this. And, oh, am I doing this well? Or is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Or did I make a wrong turn? And if you kind of let that go and just see where the wind takes you and, what looks interesting that day and just start following it. I think that's 
the best walk in Seattle. I, I totally agree. I know I frustrate people when they go on a walk with me where I won't really have a destination. I'll just be like, oh, let's go over here. Let's go over here. Um, but it's yeah. not like a trail, really, you know, where it has a route. And if you, you could, you're not going to get lost. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. It's, it's all going to be okay, you know. And I mean, I think I, I had to let that go a little bit. I had to, I think even when I first started the comic, I was kind of like, okay, I have to have like an exact kind of route planned out. And I think I want to know kind of in advance what kinds of things I'm looking for or what, or what I want to see. And when I let go of that and just was like, Hey, this alley looks interesting or, Hey, I'm going to go down this street. Cause I've never been down this street before. Or what's down here. That's when it really started to um, take off and become magical. And people even noticed the difference. Like I remember the first comic that I posted that was, Really just, I went on a walk and I saw what was out there and I didn't go out with any preconceived notions of the kinds of things I want to see. And several people commented like, oh, this is really good. Like you've gotten really good at this. And I was like, oh, it's like they didn't know that there was a difference in the way that I was doing it, but people could pick up something. And so I think it was a important lesson for me in my walk reporting career that I shouldn't try to, I don't know, anticipate ahead of time what I should see or or have some ideas about what kind of walk I want it to be and just let the city speak for itself in some ways. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, if you have like a destination always in mind or a route, you're also only going to see that same place over and over again, but you'll really explore more by just going off the beaten path. If there is a beaten path, it is a sidewalk. <laughs> right. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And I mean, even I find that say I need to walk to Safeway or whatever, I tend to go the same way every time. And then sometimes I remind myself, hey, why don't you just go a block down? And then I'll do that and I'll be like, oh, there's all these houses I haven't seen or here's a little free library or here's a cute cat or whatever. And, you know, you kind of get stuck in you have one route in mind because, you know, it works and then you just kind of stick with that. And I even find myself doing that. So to to just try to mix it up or or go with the wind or see what feels good or looks right that day. I think there's a lot of power in that. Do you think that Seattle's doing a good enough job to be a walkable city? You know, whenever I go to any other city or whenever I go slightly outside of Seattle, I, I, I'm more thankful for Seattle. Um, I think there are a lot of things that could be done to make it a little bit more pedestrian friendly in some areas, but for the most part, I mean, Hey, we have sidewalks, you know, that are generally well taken care of. And, you know, I've never been hit by a car, which is good. And, uh, you know, I don't feel, I feel like there's the support in place. There are, of course, a couple things, you know, if I was president of the walking club or whatever <laughs> that I would change. But for the most part, I feel like Seattle does a good job. Yeah, my, my pet peeve is when you know the construction will close off like both sides of the street and you have to go around the entire block. You're not quite sure what's going on. Yeah, that does make me a little bit irrationally angry. That and there are just certain crosswalks where you're just going to be standing there for seven minutes and waiting for the light to turn and and that sort of thing. But you know, can't win them all. <laughs> well, yeah, that does bring up an interesting question. So there seems to be very two clearly types of people in Seattle, the people that wait for the walk sign and the ones that just go, which camp do you fall under? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I love safety. And so I wait for the crosswalk almost every time, even when there are no cars around and it drives some other people pretty crazy, but I just can't help it. Cause I know that the one time I just decided to go for it, someone would come around the corner and you know, yeah, I, I'm totally <laughs> hit me and then it would all be over. You know, yeah, I'm totally with you. I mean, my, probably my thing is just, you know, if we all just follow the rules, the streets will be a lot safer for everyone. So I'm just doing my right. part. <laughs> exactly. I'm a rule follower, so I'm going to follow the rules. So if people want to find more information about the Seattle Walk Report, where should they go? Uh, it's, it's the Instagram is Instagram.com slash Seattle Walk Report. Or if you Google Seattle Walk Report, it's the first thing that comes up. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. And thank you so much for your comics. Oh, thank you so much. Have a Thank you for having me and have a good day. This has been Talk to Seattle. I've been your host, Jason Rigdon. If you want to support the show, please go to talktoseattle.com slash support.